Imagine a universe teeming with life, yet silence prevails. Why don't we hear from them? Let's embark on a thought-provoking journey through the enigma of space. Picture the universe, vast and unending. It's a cosmic playground, a vast expanse that's home to billions upon billions of stars, each one a radiant beacon in the endless night sky. Some of these stars have planets orbiting them, planets that could potentially be cradles of life. Now let's take a step further. Among the billions of galaxies, each with billions of stars and countless planets, there must surely be a multitude of planets with conditions just right for life, as we know it. The universe has been around for about 14 billion years, plenty of time for life to evolve and civilizations to rise. So if the universe is so ripe for life, the question that boggles our mind is, why haven't we heard from them? Consider our own planet, Earth. It's a tiny speck in the cosmic ocean, yet it teems with diverse life forms. From the simplest microbes to the most complex creatures, life has found a way to thrive in the harshest of conditions. If life can exist here, why not out there? But, despite our high-powered telescopes and sophisticated technologies, we haven't yet picked up any signals or signs of extraterrestrial life. We've sent probes and satellites, we've listened with giant radio telescopes, and yet the cosmos remains eerily silent. It's as if we're alone in this vast universe, a lone ship sailing in an infinite sea, this puzzling situation where our calculations suggest we should have made contact, yet we find ourselves in a seemingly empty universe, is the essence of the Fermi paradox. It's a question that has puzzled scientists and thinkers for decades, and it's a question that we'll explore in depth. This eerie silence, my friends, is the Fermi paradox. But what exactly is this Fermi paradox? Well, let's dive right in. The Fermi paradox is essentially a cosmic conundrum named after the Italian physicist Enrico Fermi. Fermi, a key architect of the nuclear age, had a knack for asking profound questions in a simple way. During a casual lunchtime conversation with colleagues in the summer of 1950, Fermi famously asked, where is everybody? Now he wasn't wondering about the whereabouts of late colleagues or misplaced sandwiches. Fermi was referring to extraterrestrial civilizations. You see, our Milky Way galaxy is a bustling neighborhood of about 200 billion stars, many of which are likely orbited by planets just like ours. Even if a small fraction of these planets hosted life and an even tinier fraction evolved intelligent civilizations, there should still be a multitude of alien societies out there. So, Fermi's question, where is everybody, is a poignant one. It highlights a glaring contradiction. The universe should be teeming with life, yet we see no evidence of it. This paradox is further amplified when we consider the age of our universe. It's about 13.8 billion years old. Earth, on the other hand, is a relatively young 4.5 billion years old. This means there has been plenty of time for civilizations to arise, develop interstellar travel, and colonize the galaxy. Yet here we are, seemingly alone in the vast cosmic ocean, with no signs of extraterrestrial neighbors, no radio signals, no spacecraft, no evidence whatsoever. This stark contrast between the high probability estimates for extraterrestrial life and the lack of contact or evidence is what constitutes the Fermi paradox. So, Fermi's offhand remark during a lunch break has turned into one of the most profound questions in our quest to understand our place in the universe. The Fermi paradox is the cosmic equivalent of a murder mystery without a body. To understand this paradox, we need to delve into the heart of the Drake equation, this equation, named after American astrophysicist Frank Drake, is a probabilistic argument used to estimate the number of advanced civilizations that might exist in our Milky Way galaxy. Imagine it as a recipe, where each ingredient represents a factor that contributes to the final result. The number of civilizations in our galaxy with which we could potentially communicate. Let's break down this cosmic recipe. The first factor is the rate of star formation in our galaxy. This is crucial because without stars, there are no planets and without planets, there's no life as we know it. Next is the fraction of those stars that have planetary systems. We've discovered that most stars host at least one planet, so this fraction is likely quite high. Then we consider the number of planets that could potentially support life. This means planets in the habitable zone, also known as the Goldilocks zone, where conditions are just right, not too hot, not too cold. The fourth factor is the fraction of those planets where life actually develops. Now this is where it gets tricky, as we only have a sample size of one, our Earth, to base this on. The next two factors deal with the development of intelligent life 
and the ability of that life to communicate across interstellar distances. Again, we only have ourselves as a reference, making this a challenging guess. The final factor is the length of time such civilizations can communicate. This depends on a civilization's longevity and technological capability. Each factor is fraught with uncertainty, and small changes can drastically alter the outcome, leading to a wide range of possible values for the number of advanced civilizations. But remember, the Drake equation is not meant to give a precise number. Instead, it's a tool to guide our understanding and stimulate conversation about the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The Drake equation gives us a framework, but it doesn't solve the mystery. So, what are the possible explanations for this paradox? This question is an invitation to journey into the unknown, an exploration of the hypotheses proposed to explain the Fermi paradox. First up, we have the zoo hypothesis. Imagine, if you will, a universe where advanced alien civilizations exist, but they're intentionally avoiding contact with us, treating Earth much like a zoo or a nature preserve. They're watching from a distance, ensuring we aren't disturbed in our natural evolution. Maybe they're waiting for us to reach a certain level of technological or social maturity before they initiate contact. It's a fascinating idea, isn't it? Next on our list is the transcension hypothesis. This proposes that once a civilization reaches a certain level of technological advancement, they transcend, leaving this reality or dimension. This could mean they migrate to a digital realm, miniaturize themselves, or explore other dimensions. Our radio telescopes can't detect them because they've moved beyond our conventional understanding of existence. It's a mind-bending concept that challenges our perception of reality. Finally, the somewhat ominous possibility of civilizations self-destructing. This hypothesis suggests that any civilization advanced enough to communicate across the cosmos is also advanced enough to destroy itself, either through war, environmental devastation, or other self-inflicted catastrophes. It's a sobering thought that serves as a mirror to our own world and the challenges we face. But remember, these are just theories. None of them has been proven or disproven. They exist in the realm of speculation, a testament to the human mind's endless capacity for curiosity and imagination. Each hypothesis, in its own unique way, adds another layer of mystery to our paradox. So as we delve deeper into the Fermi paradox and its potential explanations, we find ourselves standing at the edge of a vast cosmic puzzle, yearning to understand our place in the universe. Each hypothesis adds another layer of mystery to our paradox. Could there be insurmountable barriers preventing civilizations from communicating? This leads us to the concept of the great filters. Picture this, a series of daunting hurdles, each one potentially capable of halting the progression or even the existence of intelligent life. The Great Filters theory proposes that somewhere in the evolutionary timeline of a civilization, there are obstacles so challenging that they prevent the species from advancing further, perhaps even leading to their extinction. These barriers could be anything from a catastrophic natural disaster like a massive asteroid strike to self-inflicted damage such as nuclear war or irreversible climate change. But what makes these filters great? Well, they are termed as such because they are thought to be almost insurmountable. If a civilization can overcome a great filter, it's a monumental achievement, one that may allow them to leap forward in their development, perhaps even to the point of interstellar communication. Yet, the ominous part of this theory is the question of where we, as a human race, stand in relation to these filters. Have we already navigated the most significant hurdles in our path or are we blissfully unaware of a looming great filter just waiting to test our mettle? Imagine the implications if we have already passed the great filter. It could mean that we are among the lucky few, the rare civilizations that have managed to survive against the odds. But on the flip side, if the great filter is yet to come, it presents an existential threat that could end our civilization as we know it. This theory could provide an answer to the Fermi paradox Perhaps the silence we're experiencing isn't due to a lack of civilizations out there, instead it's because they're still grappling with their great filters, unable to reach out beyond their planets. So, we're left with a chilling, yet intriguing question. Are we past the great filter, or is it yet to come? Yet hope remains in the form of the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI. This dedicated international collective of scientists and engineers keeps our eyes and ears open to the cosmos, constantly scouring the universe for signals that might indicate we are not alone. SETI's methods are diverse and ever-evolving, harnessing the power of modern technology to push the boundaries of our search. 
Massive radio telescopes like the ones at the Green Bank Observatory in West Virginia listen in on the universe's radio waves, hoping to catch a whisper from a civilization light years away. But it's not just about listening. SETI also examines the light from distant stars for signs of artificially constructed megastructures, like the hypothetical Dyson Sphere, a structure built around a star to harvest its energy. Imagine the level of technological advancement required to construct such a marvel. SETI's efforts are also aided by the rise of machine learning and artificial intelligence. These powerful tools can sift through the enormous amounts of data collected by the telescopes, searching for patterns and anomalies that might indicate an extraterrestrial signal. Looking ahead, the future of SETI is promising. With advancements in technology, we're not only improving our listening and observing capabilities, but we're also expanding our understanding of what to look for. Concepts like biosignatures and technosignatures are becoming increasingly significant in our search for alien life. Biosignatures are signs of life as we know it. Oxygen, water, carbon-based molecules. Technosignatures, on the other hand, are signs of advanced civilizations, radio signals, artificial lights, or even pollution. As our technology evolves, so too does our potential to detect these signs, even from light years away. The James Webb Space Telescope, set to launch this decade, will bring a whole new level of sensitivity to our search, capable of detecting even the faintest of signals. The search is far from over. The universe is vast, and we've only just begun to listen. In the grand scheme of the cosmos, where do we stand? This question, simple yet profound, has been at the heart of human curiosity since we first gazed upon the stars. And isn't it marvelous how the Fermi paradox, this enigma of space, has given us a fresh lens to ponder this age-old question? We've grappled with the paradox, the silence from the cosmos, and it has led us to question our understanding of life and civilization. We've used the tools of science like the Drake Equation to quantify our search for extraterrestrial intelligence. But the universe in its vastness has remained silent, amplifying the mystery of the Fermi paradox. Yet the paradox isn't just a puzzle, it's a mirror reflecting our place in the universe. It forces us to confront the possibility that we might be alone, or one of the few civilizations in this seemingly infinite cosmic ocean. It's a humbling perspective reminding us of our insignificance on the cosmic scale, yet highlighting our uniqueness in the grand tapestry of existence. The implications of the Fermi Paradox stretch beyond our curiosity about alien life. It nudges us to consider our future. If we are indeed alone or among the few, then the responsibility to safeguard our civilization, to ensure our continuity, becomes even more paramount. It instills a sense of cosmic stewardship, a drive to protect not just our planet, but our place in the universe. The Fermi Paradox also kindles a spirit of exploration. It reminds us that the universe is vast, unexplored, and full of possibilities. It invites us to venture beyond our celestial neighborhood, to reach out into the cosmic wilderness driven by the hope of discovery and the thirst for knowledge. Perhaps in the silence, we find not loneliness, but a call to adventure. The Fermi Paradox, rather than painting a picture of cosmic solitude, may well be the universe's invitation beckoning us to step forth into the cosmos, to seek, to explore, and to understand. The Fermi Paradox is not just a question, but a journey into the unknown. A voyage where we've tackled mysteries of the cosmos and sought answers to some of the most profound questions of our existence. We've unveiled the Fermi Paradox, an enigma that challenges our understanding of the universe and our place within it. Why, in a cosmos teeming with billions of stars and potentially habitable worlds, have we yet to encounter signs of extraterrestrial civilizations? We've explored the Drake Equation, a mathematical model that estimates the number of communicative civilizations within our galaxy. This equation, while not definitive, propels our thinking about the probability of life beyond Earth. We've delved into various hypotheses for the paradox, from the possibility of civilizations self-destructing before reaching a stage of interstellar communication, to the idea that we might simply be looking in the wrong way or at the wrong time. We've considered the concept of the great filters, potential barriers to the development or survival of advanced civilizations. These filters could be lying in our past, suggesting that we are among the rare lucky ones or ominously in our future, hinting that our journey as a civilization might be perilously short-lived. We've looked into the future of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, an endeavor that symbolizes our collective curiosity and aspiration. 
As technology advances, so does our capacity to explore and understand the cosmos, nurturing hope for a future discovery. And finally, we've adopted a cosmic perspective, reminding ourselves of our tiny place within the grand canvas of the universe. This perspective not only humbles us, but also fuels our determination to continue the search, to keep asking the questions, to keep looking up and wondering. The universe is silent, but we continue to ask, where is everybody? Our journey into the unknown continues, and with it, our quest for understanding, our pursuit of knowledge, and our unyielding hope for a cosmic connection. We may not yet have the answers, but we have the questions, and sometimes, that's where the true adventure lies.